gentlemen, your 2016 Summer Split MVP, Bjorkson! The best in TSM's history. Take your award. Back then it was a lot simpler. It was a lot more about just having fun rather than, you know, being super competitive. It was just my love of the game and my, my passion. In terms of being a leader or much of a teammate, I didn't really know how to elevate my team. We are in Jutland, in a city called Holstebro. It's a very nice place we live. Lots of space and it's quiet. It's green. I like it. Yeah, son played a, a lot of uh, handball and football early on. He was very fast on the court, but he got asthma and that's why he had to stop playing that type of sport. I started playing League of Legends because of my like friends in school started playing League. At first I was like, I don't want to play that game, it looks like a kid's game, but eventually I, I tried it at a LAN party and I got hooked. Me and my friends would compete in these weekly tournaments for $75 or $100 and we would have to play like eight or 10 hours straight I started like playing against these professional players and I had seen them going to tournaments and, and I started talking to some of them and they would compliment me and be like, oh wait, really, you're like 15, 16 years old? That's really impressive. The way the map is broken down is there's three main lanes and a jungle which is kind of between the lanes. The mid lane is obviously in the middle of the map, the top lane is on the top side of the map, and the bottom lane is on the bottom side of the map. So simplistic in that sense. But what ends up happening since you were in the middle as you're playing the game, a lot of people are running in and out of the mid lane and also that player has the ability to go anywhere on the map. So what any advantage the mid laner can get, they can transfer that to the rest of the game. Whereas let's say the top laner gets ahead, it's much more difficult for them to help the rest of the map because they have to cover so much extra space. In, in the start, uh, I didn't know that, that League of Legends was so uh, big uh, eSports. Uh, he was just playing at home in his room and every Sunday he participated in a tournament with some other, other players online. And uh, we had not to disturb him at that time. And uh, then he got contacted with Copenhagen Wolf, who wanted to uh, have him on that team. My first experience playing with a real pro team was probably when I went to DreamHack in 2012. I was really, really nervous because I was a really socially awkward kid. My hands and my legs were both shaking during the games, even though we weren't even playing on stage. The thrill I got from our first win is just something that can't be reproduced. He's only 17. He's just come into the, into the team just last week. This is his second week going. I think it was 2013. He was a kid that was playing in Europe, and everyone said he was going to be the next big thing. There was this team called Copenhagen. And Wolves at the time that was doing really badly. Maybe it was 0 and 8 or 0 and 9. As soon as Bjergsen entered this team, you can see the trajectory of that team from the middle of the split to the end of the split was staggering. I was aware of Bjergsen when he was playing in the European LCS on the Copenhagen Wolves. I'd say one of the most visceral highlights was his pentakill on Sindri. There's five players on the map. You kill two people, it's called the double kill. You kill all five in a short period of time, and it's called the pentakill. So the reason it's impressive is you have five people on your team, five people on the other team, yet there's one player who managed to kill everyone. He flings Freddy away again. Can we see what the a kill? Can he get the pentakill here? Bjergsen chasing down. Oh, he's missing just about, but that's it's on Penta. Coming in for Bjergsen, and Copenhagen Wolves are going to push through here and pick up their first victory. It was really early on in the LCS. It was one of the first pentakills we've seen, and he was this really young kind of unknown mid laner, but at the time it was the European mid laners, our best mid laners, and he was just another one of those. Once he joined, they won seven games in a row or something like that. I was like, damn, this guy's really carrying his team hardcore. Like he himself dragged that team across the finish line. People were waiting for you to come back and show us something, and you did a pentakill. Tell us about that matchup, Syndra Oriana. It was nerve wracking. I was shaking, even though it was like, 20, 30 people in the studio, that was a massive deal to me. I didn't really understand the whole why anyone would be a fan of me, why all these people are talking about me. I was just, I was just there to play the game. They can see Sinai's going down as well. Bergson tries to do a hit and run. It's going to be Pekka. They can do it. And Rating goes down. They're catching on towards him. One more shot. Soas goes down. Pekka left on the 30. They've done it. They've done it. The Copenhagen Wolves.
themselves a oh beat of fanatic. Word. They take down the top of the league. Playing in Denmark, there's not enough players, so you can't really be a professional Danish player, kind of. You have to join other leagues, like in the EU LCS or NA LCS, to become a pro. Uh, when I created my esports organization, it was about pursuing my passion. So I just decided to create TSM because I loved it. At one point, I was the best player in my position in the world. When I decided to step down, we looked at every single possible candidate. Bjergsen was recommended to me by Dyers. I played against them in European Soul Queue when I was living on the East Coast. My first impression and memory of Bjergsen was highly mechanical. I started to realize how often he actually kills mid lane or gets extremely far and there's just like a super big presence on the map. I knew that he was the right candidate as soon as I met him in person. In terms of going to North America, it, it kind of came down to that they were starting to implement like coaches and a, they had like team houses and this kind of stuff. I never had a team house or like a solid team manager or a coach, so the in infrastructure in North America really interests me. First, when he came to me, uh, Søren, and said that uh, he wanted to be uh, a pro in, in uh, computer gaming, I said, yeah, that's, that's something you do offside uh, of a work. So what, what would you live off? And he said, I, I can live off this because I'm good. Uh, I thought, yeah, he, he thinks he's good, so uh, let's, let's see uh, how it works. It was difficult to say, yeah, just travel to the other side of the world. The difficult thing was when he started to be a pro, that was where it was difficult to make the decision. Should we take him out of school and then let him play full-time League of Legends? He just said, I want to go and see the world. Okay, so I'm on your own. Yeah, yeah, I just want to experience. Afterwards, he told me that he had some contact with a team that he should talk to, and that was TSM. And when he came back, late in, in September, he told me that he wanted to get that contract and hoped that it would be possible for him. So he left Denmark in the beginning of November that year. Reggie was always like, he was like the cornerstone of like North American aggressive mid. And he was also known for being extremely smart. Like he did all the shot calling for his team. So for him to hand the reins over to Bjergsen, who's really young, he's a rookie, he has no experience being a leader. He has no, you know, not much competitive experience compared to Reggie at least. That was like a big leap of faith. TSM is built on winning. The whole world was telling me that. You're, you're coming in and filling these big shoes, you have to do well. I came in to fill this like legend spot and I just had to succeed. 